Hi guys, so today's video is going to be some of your unpopular Joe Abercrombie opinions. So I asked over on my Instagram stories for you to let me know what are some things about Joe Abercrombie's writing, his characters, so on and so forth that you don't really agree with everyone else on. Jumping into this one, the first one, Giselle Down Luthar, uh, is better than Glockta. Fight me to the mud. Glockta is way better. <laughs> I mean, you know, obviously, totally fine that you like Giselle more. I like Glockta more in his personality. He, I don't think, has the same level of growth. I mean, Glockta... Glockta's arc is basically just like Glockta being Glockta most of the time, whereas Giselle, I definitely think that his arc, there's more to it, and I think his personality fluctuates more, and the way he sees the world changes, and I don't know how much Glockta's changes. So if you... I, I don't know, maybe you just like Giselle more than Glockta. I just think Giselle is gross. <laughs> He's so gross. When, and I mean, there's a whole scene where he just is looking in the mirror, admiring himself and thinking how beautiful he is. And <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I don't know. He's just so self-centered. He's always thinking about himself. And he's also, he's so dumb. Like he has a whole part where he's attracted to this woman who is the sister of his friend. And he's thinking about her at one point and he's like kind of enjoying these thoughts. And then he sees her brother and then instantly he's like, oh my gosh, like, can he tell? <laughs> he's just so stupid. He's definitely entertaining in that way. And like I said, I think he has a interesting arc, but I mean, I love Glockta, so. I disagree. This next one actually touches almost exactly on what I was saying before. I actually forgot this was here. It says, Giselle had the best character arc slash growth of any in the series, but fans love to hate on him so no one cares. Mm, so I agree that he has a great arc. I I don't I don't know if pe I don't do people love to hate on him. I think he's really obnoxious and quite stupid a lot of the times, and he can be really a lot. He can be a lot. But I don't know if I see people just hate him thinking he's a terribly written character. I don't know. I think that the thing with this character is that he is so despicable initially, in my opinion. But because he has this arc that he kind of starts to change, but then there are moments where if some if somebody does something and he initially had a negative view of them and he starts to come around like seeing things differently and that person bothers him even once, he instantly goes back to being like, oh, disgusting person, they're so gross. He, he immediately goes back to that old self and then like he'll kind of start to fight it. So the thing is, I mean, Glockta is a despicable person too, right? Just in a different way. I feel like Glockta is that inner voice that a lot of us have that we can't vocalize, whereas Giselle is that voice that you're afraid people have in their head. This next one is interesting. I kind of agree with part of it, and then I really don't agree with another part. So it says, Best Served Cold was written to be a teen flick on Netflix to filmy. So if I understand correctly, it was kind of rooted in based off of a film. So it feeling like a film makes sense. I agree with that. I think it does feel like a film. They could make a movie of it and I would p watch it. I think it would be a good movie. It's at its core, it's just a revenge story. But the teen flick part, I mean, I don't know what movies, uh, I guess I don't know what the teens are watching these days, <laughs> but I don't think it seems like a teen flick at all. I agree with this next one. It says, I don't know if it's unpopular, but Pharaoh added nothing to the story. She's pretty forgettable. I feel like, I mean, I, I forget about her. So I agree, she is pretty forgettable. She, I mean, she shows up so late in the first book that it almost feels like Abercrombie forgot about her too. <laughs> okay, I don't know necessarily if I disagree with this, so maybe I have an unpopular opinion too. <sighs> okay, it says people think his characters are deep when really they're very memorable but very shallow. I, I don't know if I disagree because I kind of, I do think they're super memorable, but I don't know that I think that they're incredibly deep necessarily. I think that they are they're very easy to summarize, which, uh, I mean, I think he's great at, at writing characters. I, 
like you said, they're just, they're really memorable. They have their things about them that he kind of repeats a lot. I always say, I just said recently too, like we always have the Logan-ism of say one thing, say this, or the way that they refer to each other, the one character that always has to go to the bathroom right before he's about to fight, and then he's gotta go really bad the whole time he's fighting. And <laughs> you get these little things and you get those things repeated to you. I'm confused about this next one. It says, a little bit erotic for a YA. I don't know. Uh, I mean, books are shelved differently in different places, so I don't know if Joe Abercrombie's works are all shelved as YA where you live, or if you're specifically referring to Half a King, which is YA. So I don't know <laughs> because I haven't read all of Half a King. Um, but his other works, in America at least, and I think the UK, are considered adult. So I would agree, though, that if they were sold in YA, they are a little erotic <laughs> to be Y. I mean, they contain some sexual content. So yeah, I would agree if it's considered YA where you are. But I don't, um, I don't know if you're referring to all, all of his works or just half a king. I don't know. This next one made me chuckle. It says, it's not grim dark. The darkest thing is Glockta sucking his teeth all the time. I don't have a whole lot to add to that. I, I don't actually think his books are that dark either, which a lot of you agree with. I mean, the next one says his books aren't that dark in my opinion, and I don't get the humor that everyone keeps talking about. I do think his books are funny, but I think that they're kind of, I wouldn't even say subtle humor. It's just more kind of cheeky. It, it's like, you know how there are some people that are really good at insulting people, but they do it in a way where you're not sure if they just insulted someone or if they meant to insult someone. So they'll just say something and then everybody's kind of just, nobody acknowledges it. But then if they like give a certain person like a wink or a little look, like, you know, and then it's funny. That's kind of how I feel like the humor is in these books. I think a good example, a specific instance of this is the chapter name in Best Serve Cold, the first chapter. I just double checked. It's Bena Mercato Saves a Life, which that in and of itself, like that's not funny, right? What's funny about that? But then when you read, when you read it and then you realize <laughs> the fact that he named the chapter that, I'm, I think that's really funny. But it's, again, it's not, it's kind of one of those, you think to yourself like, or you say out loud like, oh, that's really funny, but you don't really laugh. That's, I feel like the kind of humor. One more person that also is commenting on the level of darkness. It just says, not dark enough for the name Lord Grim Dark. I honestly feel like this could turn into an entire video topic, but yeah, I don't think that his books are that dark, but they're grim, they're not hopeful, and they're dark. I mean, they have some pretty bleak, gross, violent content, but because I don't feel like he really plays it up or because I don't feel like it's extreme shock value or when something disgusting does happen, it's weirdly kind of funny at the same time. That's part of why it doesn't come across as dark. But I think that something like Prince of Thorns by Mark Lawrence, where the main character is a horrible human being, that when we compare the two, definitely I think I would look at Prince of Thorns and think it's much darker. But I don't know if that's what the grimdark subgenre has to be. I don't know, because I what I don't like about some of grimdark is it almost feels like this competition of who can be the darkest, who can come up with the most disgusting, grotesque plot lines or horrific things happening to people. And I don't know, at some point I'm like, I don't care. I don't I don't know if I like this anymore. So I like the idea of it being bleak, of it being grim, of it being dark, but coupled with some humor and some entertaining characters. But I agree. I don't think that his books are all that dark. I'm gonna end with these two because side by side, I think they're very funny. One person said the blade itself is just a 500 page first chapter and Glockta isn't interesting. And then the next one says the blade itself is actually the best out of his books. I'd love to know some of your unpopular opinions or your reactions to some of these unpopular opinions. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day and I'll see you all later. Bye.